From the Woodshed, a candid conversation with Chase Morrill and Ryan Eldridge from Kennebec Cabin Company, home of the Maine Cabin Masters. Brought to you by Nelma, safeguarding our lumber resources since 1933. See the stamp, trust the quality. Now, from the Woodshed studio at KCC headquarters in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. Are we ready? I'm ready. On your mark, get set. From the Woodshed, I am Chase Morrill. With me, as always, is Ryan Eldridge. Hi, everybody. And Maggie Morrill. Hi. Hi, Mags. So Hi. we're here to talk about all things cabin, all things Maine Cabin Masters, all things Maine, all things in general. And it's on a Maine Cabin Master Monday. Maine Cabin Master Monday. It's on Mondays. Yeah, you can find us at CannabetCabinCompany.com, YouTube channel, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for commenting. Thanks for the questions. We love it. Keep it coming. And we also want to thank our sponsors, Nelma, Nelma.org, EasternWhitePine.org, SprucePineFur.org. And our friends at HeroMediaArts.com. They make us look really good and make all our websites and all that stuff function, function greatly. Functionable. I didn't say functionable. <laughs> and today, we can find out more about Hero Media Arts and all that they do for us. Dean Georgi is our guest, so we'll be sitting down talking with him, answering some questions from the fans, and answering questions about cabins. Coming from the back room to the front room. Yeah. That's is that right. our production room? Yes. Slash office, slash storage room. Slash green room. <laughs> green room. Yeah. So we've got a lot going on today. Should be good times. It's a Monday, a little different from us. Yeah. We, had a th we took a three-day weekend. It was awesome. Yeah. I, I had a four-day weekend, I think. You did nice. Yeah. I had three and a half, I think. It was it was very nice. You know how I knew your dad was being serious about this little vacation is that on the hood of, on his dashboard on his truck was his magnet with all his bits. That never comes out of the pocket. It's in my pocket right now. Yeah, no. that's a real deal right there. Yeah, vacation is on. Vacation was on. It was fun. We went up to the Buccaneer. We had a blast. The Buccaneer is awesome. There were seventeen of us at one point. <laughs> yeah, not, not all <laughs> not all sleeping in the Buccaneer. We had a couple tents. Camper. Camper. Yeah. An overflow cabin. Yeah. It was, it was fun. Beautiful weather. Hot. I mean, just laying in that river was... I never swam at that in the river. It's, it's pretty nice. Yeah. I get up there, I'm like, why, not, why do I not come up here more often? It's so awesome. And it's not that far away. Yeah. Sarah loves... I think, I think being on a river would be her ideal choice. Loves it. Yeah. So I, I was talking to Ashley on the ride home, and they said the water was freezing. So on the north end is that deeper pool... They yeah. said it was at least, her and Gavin said 15 to 20 degrees colder. It was freezing. So in that one mile stretch where it gets really shallow, it warms yeah. up the water that well, much. Well, Peggy was saying there was a spring right there, too. That would do it. Oh, there's a spring on the lower part, too, because Is there? You, you'd run through those rapids and you'd feel it change instantly. Interesting. We can do some science experiments next time. Yeah. But I had um, a lot of success with my moose safaris with Fletcher and the Mother Boys. <laughs> I feel, I am a hero to them. Like, <laughs> yeah. You're here to all of us. <laughs> so, Thank you. Yeah, you guarantee you promised moose safaris at five in the morning. Yeah, we got earlier every day. Yeah, and Fletcher and his cousin Isaac, they were up first thing, and Ryan, you know, instead of I coming have, bugging us, Ryan took him out safariing. I had Fletcher and Isaac the whole time. Then Nori came on day two and three, and then even Eva came in on day three. So yeah. it was fun. Yeah, six moose. Yeah, very successful safaris. Yeah, I learned a lot in Africa, and I took it back here. <laughs> <laughs> You and Fletcher both. What else has got? The parking lot's done. Parking lot's done. This place is looking sharp. Yeah, we're really close. Round one is done. To having the woodshed open. Yep. We start, the film crew has arrived. We start working on the finishing touches and the reveals this week. So, good round of camp so far. Pretty awesome. Yeah, and then we'll roll right into the next round. Yeah, I'll be glad when this next round is done. I'll feel better. Because it, it's already starting to feel like fall at night. Yeah. I always freak out this time. I'm like, oh my God, we still got so many, two more rounds of camps to do. But you forget how long the fall is in Maine. Knock, knock on wood. Again. It, yeah. It'll be, it'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll still be a race to the finish no matter what. Oh, it always is. It always is. It will be fun. We're up for the challenge. Yeah. So, a piece of fan mail came today. Fan mail. For Maggie. Yes, Maggie! <laughs> no. That's scary. It says Maggie Morrill. Uh, Attention, Maggie Morrill. From Elliott no, City, so. Maryland, I believe it was. 
Okay, there's a note on it that says, uh, Hello, Maggie. I heard it was your birthday. Missed you on the podcast. Keep up the good work. Uh, our... Oh, my God, I can't read. Can't read cursive? Ryan, can you read that last part? I can't read it. It's too hard. On the card, slowly slide down the band and remove. Enjoy fondly. A fan of the show, a Karen warm. Jameson and Jamal. It says a warm hello and note to say whoa. Oh, that's a... F- whoa, wow. that's fancy. Let me see. Oh, that's very sweet. Karen from Ellicott City, Maryland. Thank you very much. Thank that was you very, very much. sweet. She says happy and birthday. She has thank fabulous you. handwriting and taste in wow. cards. Yeah. Beautiful. And school is starting back up soon. We're losing our young workers. That's making me nervous daily. too. <laughs> I know. It was great, but Elon's gone. He's done already? Yep. He has to drive back to Colorado. Gavin's put his notice in, and Corbin's getting down there too. Yep. And Cam, same thing. Back to school. And we need some more help. Yeah. But that's all right. We'll still get them. Weekends. Yeah. Evenings, whatever we can. I, bet, I guarantee after like two weeks, I'll be like, oh, I'll have a couple days here and there. And <laughs> now that Gavin has his license, it's helped out a lot. It's like, okay, you can run around. Like, Yeah. We need a couple more of those. We do. We'll keep... When do you get your license? Not for a little while. <laughs> Not soon enough. You no. get a work permit, right? Conditional? Yeah. I hereby grant you a conditional work permit. No. I Boom. second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> done. No, done, 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 done. All right, so stick around. We'll be right back with Dean Georgi from Hero Media Arts. Lead us in. <laughs> and now, live from the Woodshed Studios in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. Oh, that voice sounds familiar. I know. It's, it's so official. <laughs> right after that, that noise of when, when you're waiting for the podcast, like... It's a good intense. intro, right? It's a good yeah. intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, keeps you involved. Yeah, yeah. So with us is Dean. Dean. Well, I mean, you're with us every week, but today is your turn right. in the back room. It's nice to come out to the table. Yeah, in front of the cameras. Yeah, it's a little warmer in here. Yeah, no. I'm surprised the AC's not on for you, Ryan. <laughs> That's all right. Not today. <laughs> Has to be over 80, says the boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So yeah, Dean Georgi. 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 Yeah. It's all right. I've been struggling with that. G Y O R G Y. Yes. Is it Polish? It's Hungarian. Hungarian. I was in the same neighborhood, kind of. Yeah. Half the family goes by Georgie, though, so I'll sort of take whatever comes from somebody. Georgie. Yeah. Georgie. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cool. And you're the owner and founder of Hero Media Arts. Hero Media Arts, yeah. Tell us about a little bit about that. Uh, let's see. We founded the agency as uh, DG Media Arts um, about eight years ago, I guess, and we rebranded it to Hero about two years ago. Yeah, with a focus on everyday heroes. You know, small business owners, entrepreneurs, artists, craftsmen, people just doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've got the tools today to make people look really good um, and sort of present them in a cinematic way. And we started uh, producing these short videos and putting them on social media, and the reaction was really great. And um, so we sort of aimed our brand in that direction. Nice. And yeah. you guys are located in Manchester. No, Win- uh, Winthrop. Winthrop. We've got our office in Winthrop, yeah, about 10 minutes from here. When do we hook up with Dean? Yeah, how'd you guys meet? Three, three years ago, I guess. Two. We both live in Wayne. Yes. And then you were working with Stan Wayne. Yep. And we'd sort of see you around town. And yeah. I was a fan of the show right from the start, yeah. obviously. It's a neighbor having a reality show. And I think <laughs> everybody in town was sort yeah. of excited to see it. And so I watched it for a year. And then you called. I guess I got a message from Sam Saunders from Wayne Village Pottery. And he yeah. said, Chase might be interested in a website. And uh, Season we had, 2, we could afford a website? Season 2, yeah. <laughs> well, right. we had hired some kid fresh out of college oh, yeah. <laughs> to build our website. <laughs> Where did we meet that, that kid now? Have it was college. one of Sarah's co-worker's sons, and he was more interested in... Bitcoin. Bitcoin. I remember that. Buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. We probably should have listened to him. We should have. <laughs> but that's he all right. He probably had a yacht somewhere <laughs> right now <laughs> laughing at us. <laughs> I told those old guys. <laughs> How is Bitcoin doing? Anyway, yeah, so it, that didn't work out well. <laughs> it's no surprise. And then we reached out to you, and you've been, uh, yeah, putting everything together for us ever since. Oh, it's sort of grown, right, for everybody. Yeah, it was Main Cabin Masters and then KCC, obviously, and developing that logo and brand. And Yeah. Uh, I think you ordered, new, so far. you ordered a new web page today, didn't you? Not yet. I haven't <laughs> talked to you about yeah, that. Yeah, we, we need another web page. <laughs> okay. Another link to it. Yeah. Hey, listen, can I get a beer? What's going on? I was going to say. 
It's Monday. I forget. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we know you're what you su- want. You're not surprising him. Well, I really came for the glass. This is terrific. It's a nice one, huh? Etched now. So we got these glasses now. These are etched. Yeah. And we got um. Can I see that? We got new um, woodshed enamel ones. Frosted. Ooh, Come, oh, frosted. frosted. And this is a Sebago Summer Down Session Ale. We know what that means now. Love session yeah, means right. easy drinking. You can have more than one a day. I did not know that. Or one yeah, a minute. Cole oh, was, uh, would you like that or that? Oh, beautiful session course light, please. Aren't they all sessions? So, yeah, so the woodshed is so close. We passed our health insurance on health, ins- health inspection on Friday. Tomorrow is the liquor inspection. Tomorrow is the liquor inspection. Bom, bom, bom. Knock on wood. But we're going to need a... Some sort of website for that, just to let people know. Yeah, we're here. Well, I saw the logo. It looks great, Morgan Burtwell. Yeah, yeah. Put together a great. Yeah, another logo. We got to work on signage and all that stuff, but that's all right. It yeah. looks good down there. Yeah, it's going to be a popular spot. I know you guys know that. I think it's, it is. Yeah, our right. stage is coming from Great Northern Docks this week. They're donating a stage. It's also going to act as a display. Yeah. So great. they got a really cool banner with like one of their dogs with Slash's outline on it. <laughs> great music by great people on Great Northern Docks. Nice. Love it. Did you yeah. see the post on social media this week? They said, do you have RV hookups at headquarters? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> we need a Tesla charger so station. The, the public then we'll be is, hip. Yeah. <laughs> Does Tesla we, get we those can run, We can run an extension cord out. <laughs> <laughs> RV hookup, huh? Yeah. We do not have RV hookups no. yet. Someday but in Cabin Master someday. Land. Someday. Someday. Yeah, so you've been, I mean, you kind of do it all as far as website, you know, all that stuff. You've got. Like, yeah, we've got a really great team media. Um, of employees and, and contractors, too, that pe- creative people that we can reach out to. Um, yeah, media production, uh, websites, graphic design, animation. We kind of do it all. Animation. Yeah, we've got this great uh, animator in Seattle that uh, does some incredible stuff. Yeah, some more of our corporate clients. So cool. I really think that there's there's really nothing creative or technical that we can't handle either internally or we know somebody that um, that can do it. Nice. So yeah. So to give us some more background, where'd you go to school? Where are you from? Grew up in Reedfield. Yeah. Just down the road here, a piece, uh, Miranda Cook High School. And, um, you know, I think like a lot of young people left town when I was 18 years old, just kind of wanted to see what else was out there. Went to school in Arizona. Boomerang. Yeah, exactly. Boomerang, huh? Yeah. I was gone for 20 years or so. And well, you're a big very, boomerang, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Wide uh, circle. Yeah. I was out and back, out and back, out and back. Yeah. yeah, I think six or seven places we moved, my wife reminds me, um, on occasion. <laughs> And then, you know, sort of young kids and life sort of opened up and happened. So let's go back to Maine and um, quit my corporate career job was uh, marketing communications for a big energy company in Ohio. And it was great, but ultimately sort of not as fulfilling as I wanted it to be. Came back and went to uh, Maine Media Workshops down in Rockport for a year to sort of learn photo and video and started my own agency above the garage. Cool. And, now, uh, is that school still going? It is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they've had to pivot like, you know, most businesses. They, You know, every summer people would come to the coast of Maine for a week or two, which couldn't happen this year. So they moved a lot of their classes online. But they were able to do it. And in fact, ironically, you know, open up uh, to new audiences. They've got people taking classes online from around the world that they never would have been able to come. Oh, so sure. they've been able to, uh, to make it work. Yeah, I, I had a, a great education there. Uh, terrific teachers and sort of learned the art and the craft and a little bit of the business side of how to you know do do visual media arts and uh, as i say started started above my garage and it's grown from there nice. what it, rockport has all those really specialized school that whole area that seems right yeah really uh, weird specialized boat schools. building school boat there, building yeah. granite artworks like just random interesting stuff yeah yeah, well, coming to the coast of Maine, you know, t- for an immersive experience, all these photographers from around the country just, you know, to come to Maine and do nothing but photography for two weeks is sort of a dream <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. And then it's a family business. You've got your daughter <laughs> running camera. <laughs> there she is. Yes. Fantastic. Yep. Daughter Emma is, is here and uh, son Matthew is working with us now, too. Um, yeah. You know, I think that's sort of a, um, a consequence or a bonus to me of the virus. They'd probably be other places <laughs> if they weren't sort of stuck at home right now. But, uh, yeah, no, it's working out well. And is Nina your youngest? Yes. Is she, she home? Uh, she's headed for Boston for college in oh, a couple wow. of weeks. We'll see what happens with that. Wow. But she's, yeah, been home enjoying the summer, last summer at home, or at least for now. 
See yeah. how long that lasts. I wonder how they're going to do them. Like, I can see some campuses. Like, Boston College is right in the heart of downtown, pretty much. It is. Yeah, I know. And so every college seems to be different in the, in the rules they're, they're laying out and the strategy they have. But you're right. That's, that's sort of hard to isolate them behind, you know, brick walls. That's sort of right there in, in the middle of the city. So, you know, lots of, lots of restrictions, masks yeah. everywhere, and, you know, grab and go, and one-way traffic, and masks. And so we hope for the best. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Plan for the worst, hope for the best. It's yeah. going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I have no idea how it's going to go, one way or the other. Yeah. Kind of want to see what's going to happen yeah, with that does. motorcycle rally. What's the motorcycle yeah. rally? Like, t- quarter million people went up to the Sturgis. Right. And they were having fun. They were definitely having fun. <laughs> and they were, I didn't see any masks, so. No. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, and uh, Emma, your youngest, was part of the... Ski team, the w- champion winning ski team. I always like to throw that little champions. pin. Champions, <laughs> champions of what, Maggie? I don't know. No, Miranda Cook, me, yeah, the Miranda Cook Alpine team has a a long history of uh, I think three time champions now. In a row. Yeah. Give them the Patriots just to run yeah, for so. the money. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a great program. That's yeah, awesome, so though. Can, yeah. Chase mentioned last week that you're gonna have three morals on the Miranda Cook ski team at one at one eventually. point. Eventually. 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 Yeah. They Two. train at Kent Hill. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Two in middle school and one in high school. So that'll be fun. Yep. We just grabbed Ashley's old ski boots. Those are nice. She only wore them like yeah, they fit five even. time, if that. Yeah. She didn't like them so oh, much. Hand me down gear is the best. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only way to do <laughs> yeah. it. Yes. Yes, it is. Got to come from somewhere. Yep. Nice. And then, so, I mean, you also do like our 3D tours. I was just thinking how cool yeah. that was. That's been a popular thing. Yeah, it's, it's just yep. It's called the Matterport camera. It's a 3D camera, and um, that a lot of real estate people use. And it just it sits on a tripod and does a, a 360 degree tour. Um, but you do it several places throughout the property, and um, you can walk through it. And uh, you can embed little videos in, in there, and you guys can talk about what you're doing and and you know what what products you're featuring. And product there. placement's big of that. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you don't know, we have them on our. We've done. We did. Season four. Most cabins last season. If you go to our website, you can go to episode guide. The episode guide, yep. And take tours, virtual tours of the inside of the cabins. Yep. And the one that we did for for the retail shop downstairs has all kinds of little videos embedded oh, about yeah. you know, the, the doers and makers there. Are we doing that again next week? On this? Well, yeah, no, that's, we got to talk about that too, right? It reveals are coming up, so we'll see if we want to do that. Yeah, we probably should. Well, pretty much, just table us have a business meeting. <laughs> 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 All right, we need this website. We need you here on that. Uh, yeah, holy smokes. Well, you guys are busy running around these days. So. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been good. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we're. I shouldn't say anything. We're doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, we got it. You know, it's great team working together. That's just. We're really it's the, we're, problems are out of our control right now. We're gonna we're gonna go old school. We're gonna go back to one where we're probably all gonna be there the day before, about twelve hours, <laughs> getting everything in. Oh yeah, you're right. See, can't really? say too much, but. Yeah. There's yeah. always one camp that's... Yeah, we're going season one on that uh-huh. one. It doesn't go quite <laughs> as smooth. Where well, is it? you can always fix it in the edit, right? It always comes out good. <laughs> you don't want to forget where your roots are, you know? We're getting, <laughs> getting content lately. Yeah. Done a week early. <laughs> Clean. <laughs> right, right. And then you also did a stint with baseball team? Yes. Yes. So I started my career out of school as a, as a sports writer for Baseball America magazine in Durham, North Carolina, and then got into um, minor league baseball administration, was the general manager of a couple of minor league baseball teams, which was a lot of fun, uh, running the minor league ballpark, including uh, up in Bangor. We had the Bangor Blue Ox in the mid-90s, which uh, played at Mahaney Diamond at Orono. Some of the fans might remember. Was Matt Stairs, was he the Bangor guy? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right, he crushed home runs. Yep. Yeah. Right. Wow. And we had uh, Oil Can Boyd on the team the first oh, year. You did? Oh, he's so awesome. <laughs> he was an interesting character, yeah. But was that 84, 83, right before he went up to the bigs? Uh, no, it was after. After, so He so was wait, done. Yeah, 80s, that was 90, yeah, 95. He made it, he pitched that long. Yeah. And he was just so, he just loved the game. And, you know, his big league days were behind him, but he just loved the competition. And it didn't matter if he was in an independent Northeast League or, or at Fenway Park, it was still pitcher against the hitter. And uh, I'm going to strike you out. And he went 10 and 0 for us that year. It was a lot of fun to watch. 10 and 0. Yeah. Minor league baseball is fascinating. It's like you probably never thought you worked. All the gimmicks and the fun and 
just every you know it's yeah like, no it was passion for a game exactly I mean, it's a game and you're getting paid yeah it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun yeah out of my world <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Mac I was, is just melting over to me you look confused <laughs> <laughs> Sport. I've never been called an athlete either. But I watch sports a little more than Chase does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're like a some. What would you? What would, what would be the word for you in sports? They're there. <laughs> They're there. <laughs> and we'll be talking later. <laughs> I'll be watching later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope. Not so much. Well, North Carolina. That I mean, that's a hotbed for. I mean. Yeah. Baseball down there. It's, how many? Minor, there's tons of minor league teams. Yeah, I think. Yeah, there were 10 or 12, I think, in the state when I was yeah. there. They're trimming back on it now. But um, we had a team in Burlington, North Carolina, which is, um, you know, kind of reminded me as, as a manner of sort of Mayberry. I mean, it was a typical sort of small southern town. And um, the ballpark was the heart of it in the summertime. And the same people would come out every night. And that's really where I sort of really learned to appreciate community at, at that level mm-hmm. that – you know, the people would come and they'd bake cakes for the players on their birthday. And this old guy would sing the national anthem every night. And it was sort of just a real melting pot of the community and, um, you know, some real characters. And if I could sort of say that's that's where, where I got the sort of the hero idea of just people sort of doing their thing and, and being able to tell their story and, um, you know, what they mean to a community in, in a way that's not often recognized. So that's kind of what set me on that path, yeah. I think, um, you know, fostering community. You were ahead of the game on reality TV. You know, <laughs> but I mean, reality TV is people's people are interested, yeah. you know, and like all that crap on TV. So on people want to know what people well, are it's, doing. It's that authenticity that comes through. Right. And you, you guys hear that a lot. You know, it's just that you want to believe the people that you see on TV or the, you know, the media that you, that you can that you consume. Um, and that's why I think the hero videos really resonate with people is that they are they're real. And, um, you know, and that, I think that's especially this day and age. We're sort of tired of being talked that I think or celebrity or in politics and. Sold um, something. Sold something, right. There's just a lot of noise. Like that nice two pint glass. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta um, pay to play. <laughs> yeah, you gotta pay to play. Right. So the hero videos well, are just they're just people, right? And it's two minutes of somebody that you'll probably never meet in a job that you never do. Um, but there's something I think, you know, we we do a longer interview and sort of distill that down into two minutes and it's people recognize the sort of universal um, values of hard work and perseverance and passion for what you do and pride in your work and that's what we try to convey. The thing I like about him is like, wow, oh, that's in Maine. That, that person's right down the road. Like, that's so cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it seems to be, I mean, everything's just getting shorter and quicker and shorter and quicker. You know, you've got movie or TV shows now that are 10, 12 minutes long. And right. People just want that quick bite. And- yeah. And, you know, when we started, you know, we were doing longer sort of five to seven minute web videos that were embedded in a website. And we just found that people <laughs> don't have that kind of attention span. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and I, and I just think the two the two minutes really is that's sort of the the one, the top rule that we have for for our posts, and um, you know that just seems to be a good length for social media. Well, going back to like what you were saying, like the timeline, you guys metrics is a big thing about what you guys do. Yeah, like you come at us with all this information, and it's so amazing, like how you can break down like the website traffic and like where our fans are and demographics and yeah it's amazing how much information you have i mean you can see it and like it as a producer of content or a creator or a consumer um but you know to see the data around it to see oh this one received you know x engagement or this is where the likes are going you know we can pull out some graphs for you guys and Mm -hmm. sort of see what's happening and it's you see it in a different way um yeah now how about your videos i mean do you find that certain ones appeal to people more than yeah, I think so. It it depends depends on you know do they have a built in audience? I think if if we're sure, sort of approaching sure. it as somebody and it, and it's they got a fan base already, um, but I think you know most of them um, really have been have performed well, be- and across audiences. And that's you talk about sort of big data. And as we grow, we want to explore explore more of that. Is who really is watching which? And if they enjoy this one, will they enjoy that one? Um, you know, to really to to drill down even further. Um, but yeah, engagement really is the is what we measure. You know, likes and shares and comments as a percentage of reach, right? You throw it on Facebook and to see how many people are sharing it and liking it. And um, you know, our the videos have performed really well. And that's you know that was sort of what told us that we had something to pursue. It was Julie from the Wayne General Store that was the first one we did. Um, you know, she just works really hard and is the center of town and and has that built-in audience. Not necessarily as a Facebook following, but a lot of people know her. And we just did this two-minute film and put it on our social media um, just to sort of convey who Hero Media Arts is and, and, and our approach. 
and it got something like 14,000 views. And, you know, in a really, uh, lots of positive comments, like, you deserve this, Julie, this is great. And it's, so it's a, it's a great vehicle for people um, not only to be entertained, um, but to express sort of gratitude and appreciation for what somebody does. So we, we think there's a, you know, there's a commercial aspect to it too, as a way for people to promote their small business, non-commercial commercials we call them, um, and that it, it sort of conveys your story and, and shortens that distance, you know, to, to, from a stranger to a loyal customer, you know, to, to let people know who you are and why you do it, and, and that resonates with people, and they wanna, they wanna do business with people that they know and that they like. And we've already had a lot of success with those videos. You yeah. Know, like Tom from Manly Handrails, like the video he did, you know, um, it really just it blew up. Right. You know, and he's been cranking ever since. Oh, and Molly Saunders from Wayne Village Pottery. I mean, <laughs> right? Can't the loons, the care- loons. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I mean, you guys featured her on the show, obviously, yeah. and, and we did a hero video too. And, um, you know, just to sort of show who the, the product and the person behind the product um, and the demand has been unbelievable. I mean, she's going to be busy all year doing those. People can't, yeah. people can't get them. Absolutely. Uh, and that's, that's really great in that it's, you know, it's keeping the money circulating. It's keeping it local. I mean, that has a real impact on, on her and her family. Yeah. You know, it's not just more money to Amazon, you know, or the shareholders, right? This is, you can really impact a, a, a local business and an, an artist and entrepreneur in a, in a meaningful way. Well, if you combine those videos with a you know a good social media presence, it really it really it's a, you know a twofold attack and it makes a big difference. Absolutely, yeah. And, Who would have thought we love social media so much? <laughs> Chase, everybody knows it. <laughs> now that's a good question though. How do people get a hold of you to if you know if somebody wanted to reach out? How do you choose your? Who you make videos about, and how does somebody reach out about possibly making a video with you? Yep. Uh, when we first started, it was really sort of a journalistic approach. You know, we're like, who, who do we find interesting? And we'd call them up and say, hey, we want to come do a free video f- of you. And, um, and as we did sort of 25 or 30 of those, we, we looked at them all and said, these are all really engaging and they're all small business people. And, you know, this can be a, a really important vehicle if you combine it with a social media campaign, like you said. Um, this could be a, a valuable tool. Um, and so now they are packages that are available for small businesses, and you can find out more at heromediaarts.com forward slash KCC. I mean, I would, I would recommend anyone that has a small business that might have a down period. I mean, you could fill that void, and, and the numbers are there to prove it. And yeah, and, I, and we've got some social media experts, Facebook in particular, uh, and Instagram as well. Um, and, and we sort of walk you through that process. A lot of people, small businesses, you know, m- may know that Facebook advertising is a thing, but it's really hard to get started in that. You know, you see, you post something and you see the boost button, and that's a bit of a sledgehammer, you know, to just sort of send it out there. But we, um, you know, walk you through who the target is, um, you know, and sort of and place that a little more strategically, and then walk you through some of the analytics to sort of identify your audience and and communicate with them in uh, in a unique way. I thought I was tr- tricky a couple times down the depot, you no know, one we like we're trying to get. You know, more people to watch the show. I'm down there at a couple of beers, like, boost this post. Like, oh, yeah. $100 later, like, oh, I don't know if that did anything. Like, like playing a slot yeah. machine. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, we got, cherry, we, cherry, we cherry. got season two and we got season, you know, like. Every little bit helps. <laughs> right. So Maggie has some questions that she's put together for you. Okay. Yeah, I think she's ready. Um, I'm sort of ready. She should be. Maybe she had a four-day second. weekend. Uh, <laughs> I need to go find them. Just kidding. Okay. Wait, that's already been answered. That's already been answered. She hates it when we do that. <laughs> yep. I do, actually. Um, all right. Here's some. Okay. I have, I have a few questions. I don't have very many. Okay. But we'll see. Okay. One second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right. I'm ready now. Um how has your life changed since working with like these guys wow jeez <laughs> <laughs> hopefully fame and fortune yeah <laughs> well no i it's been great to watch the success um that you've that you've had and and the way that it's happened as i said i was a fan of the show and then after the first year we started on the website and i've been able to to grow with you guys fortunately and i think it's the brands align right the 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 subjects that we are interested in um, you know, are represented by who you are and, and the people that you uh, are interested in, in lifting up as well. I mean, I think that's, you know, I've really appreciated that right from the start and sort of the local tradesmen and artists that you have chosen to feature on your show and you know, to shine the spotlight on them. 
um, really has a, has a real impact. And I think you guys are great ambassadors for the state of Maine um, and artists and craftsmen in general. So, um, you know, I think that there is an alignment here of, of where we want to go. And, and it's fun to, um, to see the platform that we have to share those, those ideals um, grow like it has. It's, you know, the sky's the limit. And you've got to see the demographics grow and our reach grow and yeah. all over the world. All, it's of, pretty all neat. over the world, yeah. Um, and again, I just I think it's that authenticity that you guys convey um, that really um, people are hungry for these days. And they, they recognize that. You can't fake that. And it's the same with our hero videos, right? It's just when we work with somebody to, to tell their story of, of why they do what they do, I mean, that's, that's sort of the essence um, of everything, and, and if you can convey that in, a, in an impactful way, it, it, it really um, it resonates with people. Nice. Yeah. I'm most proud of our demographic going down. <laughs> We're getting the younger kids to like us. <laughs> like, if we ever get to Maggie's, well, I don't know if we'll ever get that. We, we will not. I guarantee <laughs> it. I We're guarantee working on it, it though. Yeah. Instagram, you know, you guys are hip. Cool. <laughs> we, we need to do more, but it's just, I forget. It's just too busy. I don't know how. I think if you were ingrained with it, from day one growing up, but it just not a, wasn't a part of our oh, life. Thing. You can always so do was, more. You know that's the frustrating oh, yeah. thing. It's like there's always more to do. But you guys are doing pretty well. I mean, yeah. For I go through spurts. Content. Yeah. Sure. Ch Chase is spurty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a, one way to put it. <laughs> okay. Next question. Uh, do you have a favorite cabin that they have done? Um. Yes. No, I don't. Uh, I think they're all great. I know that's the easy answer, but the, the, the producers really do a great job of making every show entertaining. Um, you know, some of, some of the regions I prefer, like the ones in Cobbesee, the, the Esker one, and then some of those Cobbesee yeah. islands, just from a visual standpoint, it's just, um, you know, I'm sort of a lake person, and, and I just that's sort of the ideal camp. But, um, yeah, I, th I think the, the production team um, really does a great job. Do so you have a special or a favorite video you've made of any heroes? Yeah, a few. Again, that's, that's an easy answer, too, is I enjoy them all. And that, and that is true, I think, from a personal standpoint. Um, a couple come to mind. There's, there's one we did on uh, Bob Richard uh, owns the Record Connection, a vinyl record store up in Waterville. And I used to go there in high school. Uh, was the, Bob there? The -80s, and Bob was, had just started there. And as I say, I moved away for 25 years. Uh, and I came back, and he was still there behind the same counter in the same store, and we just sort of reconnected. And he remembered me, or at least pretended that he did. And, and um, you know, and it just as we started this 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 hero initiative. I mean, that's to me, that's what it is. It's a guy who's loves what he does, has done it for a long time, and and has really served his community um, in a way that that he wanted to do it, and did sort of things on, on his own terms. So we did a hero video on him that was. Um, Personally, very satisfying to be able to do that and, and showcase that. Now, your dream or your big picture is to have people filming hero, hero videos throughout the country, maybe the world. Yeah. just Because not just me. Sure, the world. I mean, we have so, so many talented people here, but everywhere. Right. All the ones we've done to this part, to this point, for the most part, are, are you know, people we can drive to, people in yeah. Maine. But there are creative people, you know, that are really good with the camera, obviously, everywhere, and stories to tell everywhere. So, sure, uh, you know, we can... Cause we can conquer the world. Why think about not? how many times you've been traveling. And you're like, oh man, what is that like? Street performer or just some random like? Right. I wonder what that story yeah. guy's story is, or you know, you meet the cab driver. Like, oh, I've been doing this for 45 years. Like, right. Oh, there's that. Um, there's a Facebook page. People in New York, which is pretty. Humans in New York, yeah. Kind of like what you were thinking. And it's. I always find myself reading those. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And they they have expanded worldwide now yeah. too, and gotten into some some social justice stuff and and you know some charitable aspects and documenting people right and those are portraits um and a paragraph and we're trying to do something similar yeah. with video um, but i think you know that's that's our goal is to put together a, a network uh of young video or not necessarily young uh, videographers that are interested in a creative outlet you know it's an opportunity for people to make a two-minute short film basically and even experienced videographers that are sort of stuck in a corporate situation um you know have have expressed interest in doing that because it's um you know you're telling a cool story of somebody that you wouldn't ordinarily meet. Um, so yeah, we hope, we hope to, to continue to grow. Hero video videography class would be perfect. Make a two minute video, learn yeah. how to do it. Yeah, no, that's something we thought of too, right? Because <laughs> that's, you know, everyone's got a 4K camera in their pocket, yeah. right? Their phones and, and um, you know, there are lots of classes about, you know, how to shoot 
uh, iPhone video and things, and, and I think we've developed a methodology around you know, interviewing and, and, and editing and the kinds of stories that we want to, to convey. They're, you know, they're thoughtful. Um, you know, we try to, um, to convey some deeper thoughts uh, in a short period of time. You know, so we do a longer interview and then sort of pull out the essence of who we think um, you know, that person is. And, and generally, you know, people are really um, moved to see themselves portrayed that way. Um, which is, you know, not everybody gets to see the, a short film of about them. Um, so that's that's a really satisfying part of the job. Nice. Yeah. Great. All right. Um, last question is from Mimi Peggy. <laughs> Mimi Peggy. <laughs> All right. Hi, Mimi. Okay. Uh, it's like having to do with the podcast. Um, did you know how to do podcasts, or is this all new to you? Oh, great question. Uh, no, I didn't. Um, and the podcast was your idea, obviously. You guys said, hey, let's do one. And um, we were fortunate enough to find a broadcast partner, um, Andy Collar, who's in the back. Hi, Digital, Andy. Andy. Digital Spirit Media uh, joined us and um, you know, had 30 years of broadcast experience. And, you know, yeah, no problem. We got this. And, um, you know, we're able to really pull all this together. Um, you know, you guys have been the driving creative force. Uh, and I'd like to think we've made sort of the, the back end easy for you guys to just come in and yeah. sit down and knock it out and, i think uh, we're all amazed at the success so far and yeah it seems natural Absolutely. it's been fun and yeah well so what's the next step with this where we're going we're just going to keep doing it and see how it goes like is this, is, this, is, is this really a business meeting <laughs> i just asked some questions you know, know, know episode 16 that's four months yeah no i think we've established you know um a good audience for the podcast i think there's more promotion we can do mm -hmm. uh there's more you know we're discovering new fans all the time. You know, yeah. we see it on social media and the emails and, you know, the, this, I just discovered your show and now I'm watching them all. Uh, and the same for the podcast. Um, and people, you know, again, that authenticity, the, the, the characters you portray, the people you are, um, people really enjoy learning more about you. And that's, that's the perfect, um, you know, podcast is a perfect vehicle for that. So I think that there's more original programming we can do. There's more things we can explore. And that's what I said, that there's always more to do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you've got the audience that appreciates it, um, you know, we can continue to give it to them. Go out on the road like College Name Day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to start downstairs, go to the, the real yeah, woodshed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Live remote from the real woodshed. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> one block at a time. From upstairs to downstairs. <laughs> live remote from I, Augusta. I can see this <laughs> with a live Higgins audience. Street. That'd be uh, fantastic. Oh, Get gosh. a crowd out there. You know what I saw for sale a couple weeks ago on for some reason, we're talking about WABK. Remember that big um, trailer they had that was like a boombox? You guys I, remember that? No. No. It was a live remote boombox. And there was, <laughs> I, someone, we were talking about it with someone. And, of course, one, someone it came up on someone's feed, and they sent me a picture of it. Like I was <laughs> pitching all, all of us in there going around talking. That's funny. Live <laughs> A from new the work rolling. trailer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. So last question. Do you have any more questions? No. Last yeah. question is, what is your special spot in Maine? Do you have a cabin camp somewhere that's near and dear to your heart that you guys? No, I think it's, it's Wayne. I grew up in Reedfield, and, you know, when I was in high school, Wayne was sort of the other end of the earth, right? It's in the, the school district we grew up in, you always sort of gravitate toward the school. So Wayne is new to me, and we're on Androscoggin now, which is a beautiful lake. And there are, there are corners of that lake where there's no build. There's sort of swamp maples and, and things. And you can go down there and really, really not see a soul, um, which I, is pretty special. Um, so, yeah, I've, you know, a lot of people, like you say, grew up in Maine and you can't wait to see what else there is. And, you know, you spend some time moving around and you come back um, and with a greater appreciation for what the state has to offer. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people are discovering the beauty of the state through the show you yeah. know and it's it's shot so beautifully and and you cover a lot of ground and um you know i think it's i i've grown to appreciate it much more nice. funny how that happens as you yeah. get as you travel and as you get older i met yeah. a family today from texas first time to maine and they went up to baxter and what the, the young boy they went to try and climb katata and they didn't make it to the top and they did chimney pond and he said he went swimming and came out and was covered with leeches but he was so excited to come back again. He was? Oh, yeah. So oh. excited to come back next year again. So, you know, they just He's fell in tough. love with the area. And, yeah. You know, first time up here, so which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I could have, yeah. And com community, too. You know, being from Maine, I always felt when I, 
when I went away to school in Arizona, I was, uh, I was quickly dean from Maine, right? Because the reaction was, oh, I went to Maine as a kid, or I've always wanted to go there, or I went to camp there. Or, people seem to have this connection to it, um, in, imagined or not. And um, so that was always special. It was always sort of a pride. I think it did sort of shape my character growing up here. I mean, I always say there's nothing like pushing a stranger out of a snowbank, you know? It's like that sort <laughs> right. of, um, you know, it makes, us, it makes us who we are. And there's a, there's a pride in that that I, I embrace, certainly. Nice. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Good questions again. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Now you got to go back to work. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Dean, thanks for joining us. We've been talking enough about the Hero Media videos, so let's uh, check one out. Great. Thanks for having me. Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf, John Coltrane, Velvet Underground. There's just tons and tons of great bands that, that I can think of that I grew up with that were important to me, the birds. Music really, when you're younger, particularly when you're younger, it's almost like a lifeblood to you because what they're saying is feeding right into you because you're young and they're young and it can have things to say that, that can fulfill you as a human being. Don't get that as you're older, because you know you're, you know, you got you know, taxes to pay and you know, diapers to buy. You know, you don't really. You, and who the hell's writing songs about diapers and taxes? So we started the place January of '81, a couple hundred bucks and maybe five, six hundred records. Back in the day, there wasn't a lot of information available to people that were living in small rural towns to know what what was interesting out there, and sort of was the job of the. Of the record store to teach and uh, promote and perhaps showcase certain styles of music. And that's not as important anymore, I don't think. I'm still looking at that. If you're going to get your music from another source, you're not going to have the depth, the background, the feeling as if you're rooted in something. You're going to feel like you're, you're doing it on your own. Never made a lot of money in here, but I made enough money to be independent, you know, and, and at least be able to do what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. I didn't have to answer to anybody else. I'll bet you I have been late in this store opening it up probably three quarters of the t days I get in here. So, I mean, that's how many people would want to hire me? <laughs> We are back, and we are ready to answer some questions. That was a great video. That was very good. Dean had to make sure he had a great video after being on. Of course, of course. Smart man. Yeah. And last week, we didn't really get to answer any questions. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have wanted us answering any questions at that point. So we are ready. We have cabins on the mind. Let's get the questions rolling. Okay. Sorry. Um... Hello, Maine Cabin Masters. This is from Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. My family has a 100-year-old cabin in Central Camp, California. I'm currently working on stripping and repainting the dresser and chest of drawers in the master bedroom. The last chest of drawers I did, I used latex paint, and now when the air is damp, the drawers won't open. What paint should I use for the other pieces? That so, Or should I use a stain? It's an oak dresser that has been stripped. I need to know the elevation. <laughs> <laughs> and odds are it's probably an older dresser, so it's probably an oil-based paint, which means it really got into the, pour, the, the pores of the wood. So whatever you put on it is just going to be a surface coat. It's not really going to penetrate unless you probably use an oil-based stain or some sort of Minwax poly shade that has deeper stain colors in it. Wow, you came up with the brand and the <laughs> specific type. Right? I'm not even going to try to top that. Uh -huh. And if your drawers stick, a good trick is rubbing soap on the bottom of them. That helps them glide in and out. And you can always sand down a little bit around the edges because wood tends to swell in every coat of paint you put on as it adds another layer. So there's definitely tricks to get the drawers working. My mom told me if my drawers stick to change my underwear, but that's pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> but um, bum, <laughs> ching. 
Okay. Next question is from John G. What cabin had the biggest turnaround from a t- from a, like the beginning to end? I got uh, what three come to your mind? The Ballard Camp. Yep, mine too. The Bunganuck. Yes, come on, three for three. And Eaton Island. Oh, I went Rod Hiltz. Rod Hiltz, that was definitely a good one too. But I would have probably if we went. I bet if we did four, we'd been the same. Yeah. yeah. Those ones we were extremely extremely dilapidated. bad. The Ballard one, I think we took that on just as a challenge to see if it was possible. And they had the restoration budget, not a yes. Re- that yes, was the biggest yes, thing. The budget, absolutely. they had the money, and they they valued the restoration. Yeah, there was a, a lot of money they had to take our time and do it right. Because that one was just peeling more and more and more and more and more rot out. You know, the interesting thing about Bunganuck is it was actually constructed pretty nice. It was just so much other stuff thrown on it, tons of stuff. Ton- and it had been shut up for so long. It was so nasty. <laughs> three three layers of shellac. That's a good. So for anybody who's trying to seal up smells, anything like that, shellac really is the best way to go. Um, you can get, you know, pigmented shellac, so you can tint it a little bit. You can get that. I know you can get a good, Sherwin-Williams has a good product. It's a, it's a different product. I think it's, there's more alcohol-based, so it really soaks into the wood. But I, we used two coats and then top-coated it with another paint to seal everything oh, up there. you sprayed the heck out of that place. Yeah. Two days, I think I was just there spraying, just shellacking it. Floors, ceiling, everything we could, and it worked. You know, I'm sure there'll still be hints of this, you know, hot, really humid days in the summer, but that's a good way to seal up. Of course. Kills makes a good shellac too. Lovely. Um, shellac. Can you stop, please? <laughs> Affleck shellac. <laughs> okay. Next question is from Kristen. Uh, your show has encouraged me to trek out and rediscover, rediscover our family camp in northern New Hampshire, neglected, neglected close to the 20 years, but home to many wonderful memories. I was pleased to find that it was in much better shape than I expected, but it has a tar paper exterior, which I always hated even as a child. Uh, what would you re- recommend to make the exterior more attractive, but yet affordable and durable for a pond location? I mean, if they got 20 years out of tar paper, go 20 years with Thai Par after. <laughs> Blue tap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, good old eastern white pine rough cut clapboards. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. And it is, really. It's a, it's a solve all, cover all, do it all. Yep. I mean, you can spend the, a little bit more money, go cedar, but pine, they're, you know, they're thick. They're thicker. They're, and they bend. They bend. They go with the cabin. So if things aren't perfect, you can hide a lot. Nail face nail right through it. You can leave it untreated. It'll gray up. You can tr- treat it. And they take the stain nice if you want to make it fancy. Yeah, depends how fancy you want to go. But yeah, rough cut clapboards. And they're like, remember when the um, the live edge was a big thing? Every place it should go had the live edge. That stuff is heavy. Yep. It's cumbersome. I mean, you can't go wrong with that other stuff. It's light. You can put, you can carry a ten stack in your hands yeah. and cover. You know. 100 square feet. But I think time. that's a good point is, you know, you've got to think about what you're attaching it to because, like you said, live edge is heavy. Mm-hmm. So you need a good, solid substrate to nail it to. Otherwise, it is going to pull away eventually. Whereas that stuff's so light, you can use siding nails, you know, hand nail it or pneumatic nail it. It's going to hold up. Whereas, you know, other stuff, if you've got to use bigger fasteners, you want to make sure you hit a stud or you've yeah. got a good, you know, at least three quarter inch sheathing behind that. I mean, I would be tempted to go right over the top of it, but I'd recommend probably tearing it off and making sure there's no rot and then putting a the moisture barrier up. Yeah. Cool. Go from there. Okay. Next question is from Teresa. Do a lot of the camps have neighbors quite close? I'd say 50-50. 50-50, I think that's fair. But when they're close, you won't know it. They do a great job. Yeah, we've done a couple where... They hide it extremely well. Extremely well. It's all about finding the perfect angle to shoot the camp at. When they set the time-lapse cameras, again, they find the perfect angle, make sure they capture a lot of the work, but, you know, they don't show the neighbors. Um, we've done one that was very close to the road, and you never would have known it. Never would have known it. And it's not because they're trying to hide anything, but they want you to focus on the camp. and like It, was, it looks more organic if there's not, no other camps in the background. It's just nature. And yeah. 
but there's been some places close. Yes. And there's been a couple of camps that we've had to say no to that were perfect because there were just camps all around. Right, right. And yeah, I mean, the logistics is a big thing is making sure we can get in the, there to work. But then we've done others that the camp's the only one around for miles. Miles and miles and miles. And that's nice, too. Yeah, we've, we've done a good variety of camps now. Great. Um, next question is from Megan. Do people really live that leave their camps in such disarray, or is it staged for the show? Oh, when we get there, when we get there, huh? No, I don't. I don't think we've staged any of the before. Have we? Oh, I feel like there was. No, I don't think we have. If anything, they've been. Uh, they make them look where they've no. been cleaned up. Yeah. Remember, because season one and two, like, they kind of have us come in and move their furniture, and it would make me so mad. Because we'd spend two days moving people's stuff, and I'm just seeing dollar sign. I would sit there and look, okay, there's 25 bucks, there's 20 Like, all these guys, they're paying these people to move their stuff. And it's like, there goes $2,000, and that's, yep, you know, 10% of the budget. Yep. Or, you know. But no, for the most part, these camps are as bad as they look, if not worse. And again, it's all about the angles. You know, the, the film crew is going to find the worst possible hey. look. Like, I think it was the Salter one where they didn't even show... The camp with the blue tar. I mean, we went in originally, but there was so much stuff in there, and then the, the salters moved it out. But they they didn't. They took down the blue tarp. Some of these camps look way worse. Oh, really worse. I always wondered if they used a filter on those shows at first. <laughs> you know, they put like a dark, rainy filter on, and then sunny, seventy rainbows and well, unicorns filter <laughs> didn't reveal day. Yeah, tr I mean, tricks like that work. Right. All right. Right. Next question is from Jennifer. This is for you, Dad. Um, how? Why did you decide to go to College of the Atlantic? What did you learn there that helps you today? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go grab a beverage. We're going to be here for a while. Yeah. So I decided to go to College of the Atlantic because I was going to take a year off, and my mother made me apply to a college. And then I got accepted, and I was like, huh, maybe I'll look into this a little more. Were you like, oh, they won't, they're not going to accept me? Yeah. You should have gone for Harvard, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You've been guaranteed a year yeah. off. But what appealed to me was the size. It's, I think, 300 students maximum. It was beautiful. It's a beautiful campus. It's been voted the most beautiful campus many years in a row. And what I learned there was, gosh, where to even begin? I learned... A lot. You met your beautiful wife there. I met my Thank beautiful God wife there. Thank God you both went there. Absolutely. I'll drink to that. While I was there, my senior project was to renovate the student lounge. So I took and renovated an old mansion. You know, one of the rooms, the Rathskeller, fixed it up and converted it to a student lounge. Threw a few good parties there. What's it called? The Rathskeller? Rathskeller. R-A-T-H. Rathskeller. Yeah. So you had a mansion as your student place? I mean, my, dorm, my dorm room was the old library of a mansion and it had a sunroom that looked over Frenchman's Bay. I mean, the water was maybe 20 feet, the ocean. In your dorm? From my dorm room. Was it in good shape or was it? Yeah. I mean, it was... It was all redone. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, college dorm worthy. So College Atlantic is a small liberal arts? Small liberal college. arts. Their degree is human ecology, which allows you kind of to design your own major, focus on what you want. On Mount Desert Island. On Mount Desert Island. The, the home of Acadia National Park. Yeah. Acadia National Park was our background, our, you know, our backyard. It was fun, and I also worked for a guy up there, the house doctor, and we worked on old, old mansions up there, and I, you know, salvaged all the material that was getting thrown away from those. Of course, he redid something for a senior project. Yeah, <laughs> it's not there anymore. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Well, I'm fairly the, sure it's gone. The like, building the is. The there. building is. It got redone though. Yes, but I, when they redid it, I was able to salvage a lot of the doors from the. I mean, this building was beautiful stonework. Just it had its own servants' quarters. Like it was a nice place. I mean, it was run down, but it's beautiful now. Yeah, some good memories there. Cool. <laughs> Interesting. Great. Great. Um, this is from Chris. Was there a time you regretted that you wished? You had worn working gloves most of the time. I don't see any, well, demoing. I hate gloves. Hate them. Yeah, I don't think. 
but you always get a nail in you know your hand sometimes or a scrape or scrape but they do toughen up you know over time i almost feel like in certain situations gloves would be more of a hindrance for doing demo yeah, yeah. they're catching on stuff and yeah um in the winter time you know we of course we wear gloves but once you get going you know if you don't need to if it's not brutally cold out yeah don't wear them I, i've tried everything i tried to like cut the fingers off like one Cut to the first knuckle. Oh, like a roofer's? On, oh, yeah. Or oh, then, like, oh, I didn't like that. So I'll go down the back, the next knuckle. and Yeah, I've never understood. Like little boxing gloves. I've never understood no fingered gloves. Like, oh, my. Oh, my, oh I couldn't do it. I couldn't I've done do it before, like, because you have more dexterity. Yeah. Ashley likes the mittens. <laughs> 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 Nothing wrong with mittens. Nothing wrong with mittens during demo. <laughs> But we do wear safety protection, you know. I mean, a lot of times when we're filming, they're asking us to redo stuff, and you know, same thing. We can't really be wearing masks when we're talking because it just doesn't work out. Or ear protection, eye protection. We try as much as we can. You're very, you're good at it. Yeah, I, I'm not good at ear protection, but I always have my sunglasses on. Right, 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 right. What? <laughs> <laughs> my father always used to have ear protection. Around his neck. Yeah, yeah, I remember that at all times. All times. He'd go swimming. He'd have him around his... You know, <laughs> he always wore them like jewelry. Okay. Um, and the last question is, uh, for the cabins that are four season camps, and since most of most are off the ground, how do you keep the pipes from freezing during the winter? That is the... Biggest challenge you will run into trying to do a four season camp. You have to spend a lot of money. You have to spend the money and do it right if you really want it to happen. And if you want to be, you know, you yeah, you want it done right. You want to no worry, hassle free, spend the money, do it right. When people say they want a four season camp, we ask them, are you talking year round or just later into the fall, early winter, and early early spring? Because trying to make a place usable year round is tough. I mean, re- really, only a couple camps that we've done are truly four season. They're not that yeah. job, but we spent a lot of time, and when we super insulated that place. We built yep. another room below each cabin. We super insulated that with door systems, heating systems. They had a standby generator standby because generator. losing power is a big issue. If you lose power in the winter time and your heating system goes down, you know you've got to make sure your pipes can be are drained and don't freeze up. And if you're not close to the area, if the road isn't plowed. It's just access is tough. Like I said, we try and talk people out of doing but four seasons. Luckily, we have Doug the plumber. He's our secret weapon. Yes. He designs every camp so the hot and the cold drain out. And, they, and then there's a hot and a cold outside, you know, if they want it for doing whatever. And then they all drain out. Like, he knows he's a camp master. Yeah, he is. For sure. And all the drain, you know, the clean outs are right there. So, yeah, he makes it easy for, for the homeowners. Yeah, and really, I mean, if you... If you want to use the camp in the wintertime, like a week or so, if you cut down all the drafts, you know, put in decent windows, you're going to be able to hold heat in the place. You know, if you go up there and just know you won't be able to use the bathrooms or, you know, have running water. Mm -hmm. But if you do have running water, bury your line. Make sure when it gets up into the house, no lines or no water lines are tucked anywhere in anywhere where they can be, you know. I've heard of some people putting water lines in the lake and burying them and wrapping Heating coil around them. Really? I don't think that's legal anymore, but oh. they used to. Yeah, it's it's that's a big challenge, for sure. Great. That was the last one. That was the last one. All right. Well, th- yeah, thanks for all the questions. Keep them coming. Good questions again. Good questions. We love to answer questions, all camp-related, anything, college-related. Any question. Any question. Any, any cabin match-related. We'll no politics. Yeah, we'll answer them if we can. <laughs> or religion. Other or, than that. Or if we want them. <laughs> or sports. No sports for Chase. You can ask Ryan all the sports questions. <laughs> I'll pretend I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that was another quick hour. That was. So we've got a little bit of merchandise promotion. We, oh, we're yes, really excited. Stuff. Yes. So we've made some specialty tees that finally arrived. We have, we've got four coming. Two are here. So we'll start with the first one. I mean, we had to have this one. The classic saying from good old Lance, season one, I'm coming, sweetheart. And it had to be the Coca-Cola Red. Had to be. 
And all our special edition shirts are going to have main cabin masters on the back and on the left sleeve. The Kennebec Cabin Company logo. Kennebec Cabin Company. So we, and we have a bunch of cool designs and ideas. Yes. And this and, is just the first couple. And this is a lip. For now, it's a limited edition. So get them while they're hot. We'll try, you know, we'll, we'll restock them. But we just did a small batch to see how they went. And the second, I think, is Jedi's favorite. <laughs> this one's awesome. And I'd like to friend, uh, thank my friend Michelle Bagels, Carrie, you know, from um, Signworks. Signworks up in Farmington. She d uh, did all these for us. And she's also working on a sign for us. And Signworks has done a lot of straight out of cabins. That's pretty funny. <laughs> so for people of Maggie's age that don't know. Hi, Tess, Mom. What's it <laughs> Tell them what it's from. I still don't. I wasn't really paying attention. It's a 90s rap icon, right? Yeah. Rain cabin masses. It was straight out of Compton, I think. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what she said. We don't look nearly as badass as those guys were. No. Well, yeah. That's kind of a fun one. We have a couple more cool designs coming. But, yeah. Thanks, Bagels. Yeah, this is fun. And we're going to have, like Brian said, more coming. We've got more products coming to the store regularly. Stop by if you're in the area. Check us out. You may run into one or two of us. we got a sweet new parking lot. Sweet new parking lot. Plenty of room. Pack diagonal, as I was told today. <laughs> That's right. Diagonal parking only. We'll have signs up soon. And I think we can guarantee cold beer next week. Don't say oh, like knock that. on wood, but oh gosh, we're close. We're so close. We're so close. Yeah, so thank you everybody for tuning in and listening. Keep it coming. KennebecCabCompany.com, YouTube page. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. Thank you, Nelma. Nelma.org, EasternWhitePine.org, SprucePineFur.org. And our friends at HeroMediaArts.com, go check out Dean's hard work. Take some of those video tours and get back to us. Yeah, thanks everybody for joining us. From the woodshed, we'll be talking to you.